You're joining us at Telecom, are you? Oh, that's great, unreal. I tell you what, we need people like you, and you've made a decision that you will not regret. Perhaps you think we're just into telephones. Well, let me tell you, we are so big at Telecom that we are into everything. Well, that's enough to confuse anybody on your first day. And you probably don't even know where the loser. are. Okay. We're a pretty friendly mob here, so if you don't know something, just ask. Next step to do is to... You got a couple of minutes? Great. Why don't you come with me and we'll go and look behind the big T. Oh, Kathy, I'd like to meet our new... Oh, here's a couple of new people now. Hello, Paul. How are you? This is his first day... Uh... You see, no matter where you go these days in telecom, there's always someone willing to lend a friendly hand and see that you get properly settled in. You've got to remember that everyone was new once, whether they joined out of school or in their 50s. Pump the fuel pump like this. See the no one expects you to know your job from the day you start. Like all things, knowledge of the job comes with experience. Just enter Control T. Function one, and that'll put you into the mode to enter the document. All right? Right. Have a go. There's one thing that everybody expects, and that is that whatever you do, you give it your best shot. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. In telecom, we don't care what sex or colour or religion you are, because we offer equal employment opportunities. You are responsible for your career. Soon you'll be working for telecom, the business. Although for most of us who work in the organisation, it's pretty much a family. Never forget, telecom is very much a business. Thank you. 8872. We're always looking for ways of streamlining our operations, and you people can often see faults that others can't. If you see a better way of doing something, speak up. I mean, it goes without saying that there are a heck of a lot of us that work in telecom. I mean, you see telecom people and vehicles everywhere. If all of us employed in Western Australia got together, we could fill the entertainment centre. <laughs> Australia-wide, more than 90,000 people work for telecom. Can you picture that? That's as many as you'd get at a VFL grand final. Knock on. Imagine what it would be like if we all barrack for the one team. Well, we should, you know. We not only work for the place, we're also its owners. All of us. Every Australian is a shareholder in telecom. Well, I'm afraid you'd be growing very old waiting for a dividend check, you see, because telecom is a wholly owned subsidiary of Australian government holdings. In other words, it's owned by all Australians. We're not regarded as a government department, we are in fact a business and here to make a profit for the supply of telecommunications facilities to our business and private customers. <laughs> Telecom doesn't get a brass razu from the government to keep it going. Like any other business, if we don't get enough revenue from phone charges and the use of the facilities, we have to borrow the money. Despite the general public's misconceptions, we don't get bailed out by the government if the books don't balance. So we try to forecast our costs and set our charges to let us make a profit. Now, some people reckon that profit is a dirty word, but unfortunately without profit, we can't expand and therefore give Australians better communications facilities that they require and demand. Now, some telecom bods have come up with a name for this expansion of the telephone facility. It's called Capital Works. What that means is sticking in new exchanges, microwave towers, optical fibres, you know, that kind of stuff. Telecom has got nearly 8,000 buildings ranging from skyscrapers to unmanned repeater buildings in the middle of nowhere. Because of all this new fandangled technology, these capital works are costing a lot more than the profit Telecom makes. When they're building, a lot of businesses have to work on the same basis. 
While private companies can sometimes borrow from their banks, Telecom is not allowed to do that. I mean, can you imagine the bank manager being asked for $2 billion for an optical fibre network? What? I mean, he probably hadn't been asked for one of those for oh, at least one or two weeks. So Telecom raises funds by offering Telecom bonds to the public. These are regarded by many money people as investments in Australia's future and are safe as houses. A real nest egg. Hey, what do you reckon happens to the money that Telecom gets from your phone bills? Well, a heap of it goes to the government to pay off the interest bills that have accumulated over the years. You see, when Telecom took control of the nation's telecommunications in 1975, the government really leased the existing facilities to Telecom for a slice of the action. And that's how all Australians benefit. For the rest, Telecom has to be self-sufficient. Out of what's left, Telecom has to fund its role as a world leader in telecommunications. What number in Headland? Rarely seen, but growing all around us, lies one of Australia's most precious assets. It's the telecom network. It belongs to us all, yet any business can make it work even harder. Opening new markets with double... Being in this high technology is expensive, particularly when you spend a lot of time and effort in research and development. ...mobile phones to keep business on the move. The network's already there, so talk to telecom about making it even better for your business. Our country has a lot of unique features. Some of them present telecom engineers and technicians with heaps of problems, you know, like the dust and heat of the inland. They don't find much country like that in Japan and Europe where a lot of the electronic stuff is designed. So as Australians, we've had to develop solutions for our own problems. But like everything, it's expensive. So now you know the telecom is in the cities and in the bush. And we've seen that all Australians have a stake in the big T and that all the profits and borrowings get poured back into the system all the time. What a wonderful little organisation. Did I say little? There are more than 90,000 people working for Telecom, but every one of us is an individual in a fiercely competitive business. OK, let's just pause for a moment. In your induction folder, you'll find there's a heap more information to look at, so just relax, take your time, and have a think about what you've seen so far. Don't worry about me, I'll be back.